Please join me in welcoming Robert. Thank you. Uh, yeah, Thank you. thanks. Good morning. Oh, it's great to be in Austin. <clears throat> I used to live here in the uh, late 90s, and I remember two things. That, that, you know, first two things they told me was, first, if you don't like the weather, wait five minutes, and two, wear orange in September. I think, I think it's a lot changed. Uh, <laughs> a lot has changed since. Um, speaking of change, we're going to talk about transformation, and particularly transformation in the digital grid that's, that's about to occur. Um, how, many, how many of you remember the uh, telco transformation that occurred in the early 2000s? Show of hands. A lot of you, great. How many of you see a parallel between what happened in the telco industry and what's going on in the utility and energy industry? Not that many. There's actually a tremendous amount of parallel between the two industries and the experience of what they went through. I mean, it was a, it was a, there was a couple of things that were going on. One was technology was coming up from one direction. That was the internet, right? The internet, the routers, the data, the proliferation of application solutions that were coming on board, the over-the-tops, the ISPs, and there were the telcos. <clears throat> and they were in the network provision business, and, and there was fiber, the new infrastructure that was coming out, right? And what happened there? There was a transformation in the telco industry. They went from a network provider to a service provider, and they started looking at monetizing data. Not a lot of difference between that and what's happening here in our industry today. So on one end, we have technology coming in. What are the technologies? We got the cloud. Cheap, abundant amount of processing power. We got advanced analytics because of that processing power. We got processing power at the edge. I mean, you can buy you know, 16 cores, 32 cores, lots of memory, and run advanced analytics on a tiny little laptop. Amazing. We have things like uh, cybersecurity coming in. A lot of money going in that area to secure the communication. But what's, what, what's all this doing is that it's, it's really driving proliferation of data, something that we in the energy industry haven't really looked at. We actually ran a survey recently. So let's look at some of those other mega trends. There, there are a few trends that are going to change the world as we know it. The energy revolution. Um, we have renewables coming into the mix and creating diversification of energy. And this is changing control of electricity and timing and who and when and how much and you know, how, who's going to pay for it. We've got electricity coming back into the grid, being sold into the grid. Okay. Another major revolution that's occurring is in the industrial revolution side. In the industrial side, manufacturing in particular, we are seeing um, a mega trend towards automation. Actually, it lights out operation. And that's going to onshore a lot of the manufacturers back into to the countries of origin, because they can now run modular components, like Lego blocks of, of manufacturing, right? So they'll have self-contained operational lines with everything in a box that they can put together, and it's going to run a lot more efficiently, and it's going to uh, uh, efficiently both in terms of the operation and energy usage, and um, they can move it. It's mobile. They can shift it around. And it's lights out, completely automated end-to-end. -end. And then the other one that I'm particularly fond of is the electrification of the vehicles. That, that one's actually a fun one. So a couple of, couple of data points for you folks. Um, electric vehicle engines are roughly uh, 20 parts. Combustion engines are 2,000 parts. So that means that auto manufacturers stand to gain a tremendous amount out of electrification of the vehicle. In addition to that, we're seeing a couple other trends going on. First, uh, let, me, let me share some of the statistics with you that we, we looked at recently. By 2025, there will be 30% plus of the vehicles will be electrified. And that's going to generate, that alone is going to generate on the upwards of 10 billion terabytes of data. Because these vehicles aren't just being electrified, but they're also moving to become software as a platform running applications and services and solutions. Right? By 2040, we estimate that there will be about 40% EVs on the market. So 40% of the vehicles are going to be EVs. And they're going to generate on the order of 90 billion terabytes of data. And they're going to utilize somewhere around 1,400 um, 
ter uh, ter <laughs> uh, terawatts uh, of terawatt hour of energy. So that's astounding. I mean, that, that, that shift in itself is astounding. But that's also saying that it's not just about the electrons, it's about the electrons plus the data. And that's where the new value is being created, the electrons plus the data and the convergence of the two. Uh, and the gas stations of the future, they're going to be the homes, the buildings, right? Uh, they're going to be along the superhighways. And, and that's how they're going to get fueled. And of course, we got autonomous coming too. And just about every car manufacturer that we know in the world is um, playing around with autonomous right now. They're playing around with it, but I think in the next three or five years, we're going to see autonomous. So wonderful thing, battery prices are going down. Uh, I think within the next year, we'll see uh, cars that will get somewhere in the range of 300 miles. Uh, for roughly between thirty and forty thousand dollars, which is going to help the proliferation. And of course, the one main challenge that, that remains is the EV charging infrastructure. Who's going to pay for it? Who's going to own it? Who's going to own the asset? Who's going to run it? Who's going to manage it? How is that going to consolidate? And then we have the oil companies on the other side. You know, they're, they're the, on the retail side of their business. Uh, you know, it's, it's really all about retail. It's all about the grocery stores. It's not about gas in the gas station. And those guys are even putting EV chargers in there. So you go out there, spend 20 minutes fast charging your car, you can buy a whole bunch of things while you're there. So that's, that's sort of the, the, the world, the way it's shifting. So what's, what's the most abundant energy source in the world? Any guesses? Sun. Sun, yeah, shines every day. Denial. Denial is the next biggest energy source in the world. So what we're seeing is that we're seeing a major shift in the business models, right? We're seeing that, um, that we have uh, companies emerging, like Next, Imbala, STEM, and, and they don't have any generation assets, right? But yet they're providing ancillary services over the top. Okay, so another parallel between what happened with the internet and the telcos and what's happening in our world, right? Did anybody see Uber coming? Uh, the taxi industry didn't. We didn't. Anybody see Amazon coming? The book industry didn't. The retail industry didn't. My God, I mean, they can be in any business they want to be in. Uh, so they're coming. And we're beginning to see the emergence of these changes in the business models and in the way that um, infrastructure is going to be monetized, particularly the energy infrastructure. So we are absolutely due for a shift in the business models. There's no question about it in my mind. So what's, what's the uh, compelling event? the burning platform that's going to drive this transformation. You know, we, we sort of looked around and we said, well, it's not regulation. Those guys aren't moving fast enough. It's just not happening. What's really going to change, um, what's, what's really driving this, the, the compelling event for us in this industry is, is that price point right there. Right? We've seen it recently, right? And it's actually been occurring overseas for some time, but we've seen it recently in North America. Battery plus PV is about the price of gas generation and going down. So it's, what's, what's, what's fascinating to me is that China is going to lead the way, right? China is, going to, China is going to lead this. Europe's going to follow, US is going to lag, and India and Asia are going to leapfrog the rest of the world. So this is, this is actually pretty important. You know, I was talking to one of my friends, and, and he said to me, he goes, look, you know, we, they were in the end-to-end -end value chain of the energy electric, electric utility business. And he said to me, he goes, you know, we have actually, uh, J.D. Power, we're like one of the best, most revered electric utility companies in, in our region and potentially in North America. And if I get a one cent per kilowatt hour change in the price of electricity, I'm going to lose all my customers, or most of them. So there's no loyalty. So it's all about value creation at this point, right? We know that the traditional assets are not going to be efficient going in. We're due for an investment in infrastructure, and it's modernization is what we're talking about, modernization of the grid. We're due for an inf infrastructure upgrade. Most of our assets are aging. And um, there's a lot of money. There's a lot of money sitting around waiting to be invested in that infrastructure. So where's the opportunity here? Is it on the regulated side of the business or on the unregulated side of the business? Clearly on the unregulated side of the business. There's a lot of opportunity, particularly if we start looking at data. So this is what digitalization is bringing to us, right? Cheap sensors, lots of data, everywhere. It's going to be in the homes, it's going to be in the cars, already with us on our cell phones, so on and so forth. And that data, that data is where the value resides.
right? That's where everybody's rushing to. That's the new gold. As a matter of fact, um, it was um, the CIO of um, FedEx at one point said, you know, the data about my assets are going to be, is going to be worth more than the asset themselves. So this is one area that we, when we did our, our survey that, that the electric utility companies aren't really looking at as far as we know. I mean, when we did our survey, okay, so let's, on the top of mind survey, uh, what do you think about most? Is it electrons or is it data? The electric utility industry was the, the industry that, that thought the least about data and the value of the data and where that's going and how that's shifting. And the, and the change in the business model, and more importantly, the change in the operating model. So. This is going to be a world of partnerships outside the traditional way of buying products and services. This is about going further into the electric value chain. This is about going into the buildings. And I know in the past, there were a lot of trials around, well, using the thermostat. Well, that didn't work out, right? Just, just the protocols, just, just the protocols and, and, the, and the closed nature of the thermostat vendors. That didn't work out. Well, we don't own the router. The telcos do, and by the way, they're getting into the energy business too. I was in Australia, and one of the largest Australian telco providers, who, who has about 750 megawatts of energy, is just waiting. Is just waiting to get into that business, to, to deliver what they call the fifth play, right? So there was data, there was media, there was telephone, there was home security now, and electricity is the next one. So they're, they're just sitting there waiting, and they're, they're getting ready. And they have all the operation systems, the billing systems, the capability to do this. So it's a changing world, really a changing world. And this is all about digitization, it's about the data, and it's about now getting past the meter for the electric utility companies for the most part, because that's where there's an abundance of data, an opportunity to create new services. But that's going to require a new set of partnerships, a different way of approaching that industry and market. And the good news is that there is a way to get past the meter. And uh, if any of you are interested, I'm happy to talk to you about it after, uh, after this event. So, in short, um, the world is changing in an unbelievable way. These revolutions around manufacturing and Industry 4.0, the change to modularization, the automation, um, you know, it's going to change the way that people, you know, they're going to be prosumers, as you know. Uh, they're going to change the way that um, the control points of the electricity, electric usage, and energy usage. They're going to generate a plethora of data. Electric vehicles are coming. That's going to change the face of cities. It's going to change the way we live. Uh, autonomous vehicles will not only deliver people, but deliver cargo. Actually, cargo is going to come first. That's going on. Visualization, sensoring, analytics. It's a wonderful world. It's pretty exciting. I am just so jazzed about this. It is fantastic. And the opportunities are tremendous. So my key message is, it's not just about electrons. It's about the convergence of electrons and data. And that's where the new value is going to be. And we need to substantially rethink the current business models in order to drive that adoption. Thank you. That's pretty much it. Three or four messages. That's pretty crazy. Thank you. Any questions? Any questions? We have about a minute for questions. So I know we've had some things come on via Slido. Dylan, do you have a, a question for Robert? Uh-oh, got to bring the mic up. I can probably hear. <laughs> <laughs> Shout it, Dylan. Uh, data from electric vehicles will open up new business models. What is the utility role in that if you can think about energy? Oh, thank you. That's a great question. I was actually recently with a large auto manufacturer. I think you guys all, may, may, some of you may know about OGVIP, which is the Open Grid Vehicle, uh, I think, integration platform, something like that. So the, uh, the OEMs are all participating yes. in this. Yeah, it's about vehicle to grid, right? And, and uh, we're actually looking into this as well, uh, quite extensively around vehicle to grid and where, where the opportunity of value is. And, and you hit the nail on the head. It's not clear where the value is being created today in terms of vehicle to grid. And there's a lot of technical issues around the bi-directional movement of electrons from the battery to the grid, et cetera, and the vehicle, and privacy and data and those types of things. But, but it's coming. I, I think that we will see, um, in my opinion, what we're going to see in terms of mobility is first the fleet market. You know, when Amazon goes electric, when Google goes electric, and they go autonomous, 
which is probably the next three or five years, we're going to see that happen. That world is going to change. That world is going to shift dramatically, right? So we're going to see that segment of the market go first, and there's going to be a placement of uh, electric vehicle chargers, fast chargers, and optimization of the placement of the chargers, et cetera. Um, and then the next thing is all the ancillary services are going to ride on top of that. So what are you going to do? I mean, there's opportunities around optimization, charge time, uh, efficiencies, uh, you know, calculating driving distances, cargo weights, you know, balancing all that across the board. So that's where we're beginning to see the convergence of electrons and data come in. And you know, we're currently looking at a lot of the ancillary services that you can layer on top of that mobility platform that would benefit the, um, the, the fleet providers, which is, which is the first segment of the industry, in our opinion, that's going to move and shift. And then secondarily into the consumer market, and then tertiarily, the electric vehicle to grid. So we see the vehicle to grid sort of merging in the next three to five years, where to exactly that point, it's about defining the business use cases and the value and the business models for monetizing that data that's being created uh, on the mobility side. And then the question is, how much of those services are really going to map to the electric utility industry and creation of value from the utility to the customers of, of those uh, vehicles or mobility platforms? Excellent. Excellent insights. Well, thank you so much, Robert. We thank really you. appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.